my husband's been diagnosed with prostate cancer. I'm very sorry to hear that. He had no symptoms but decided to get tested. He had a one centimeter lesion that has not spread. That's good news. Um, contained within the prostate, and he's got Gleason 4 plus 4. Uh, as it's very small, the question gets quite specific now, could he have NanoKnife as he doesn't like the side effects of other treatments? So De Debbie's husband uh, has, looks like he's been diagnosed very efficiently and very well. Clearly MRI was used early. They identified a lesion within the prostate. That lesion has been targeted. This is all state-of-the-art latest approach and Gleason 4 plus 4 has been found. Uh, Gleason 4 plus 4 is a, an aggressive prostate cancer that needs to be taken seriously. There are lots of confusing numbers and scales in prostate cancer. Uh, for those of the, you that, that aren't familiar with the Gleason scale, um, there are three numbers that matter. There used to be more, but for the moment there are three, four, and five. Three is the pussycat, the the cancer that may not be cancer, that probably doesn't matter, that nobody ever dies of and never spreads. Five is the so-called tiger, the cancer that is likely to spread very quickly and often has spread by the time we've made the diagnosis. Now, Debbie's husband does not have any pattern five. Uh, he's got pattern four, which is the element in between. So it's neither the low risk one nor the high risk one and is something in between. And these are these are cancers, these are prostate cancers that can spread um, and all the cancer that was biopsied conformed to pattern four. Hence the annotation four plus four. Had there been a kind of mix of Gleason grades and Dr. Gleason was a pathologist working in America 40, 50 years ago, um, then the annotation would have been three plus four, mostly pattern three with a little bit of four or it could have been four plus three, mostly four with a little bit of pattern three. So I hope that makes sense. There are lots of other scales that we might talk about later, uh, but that's the Gleason scale. Um, so an answer to Debbie's question, this is very likely to be contained. Um, I personally, if I uh, was looking after Debbie's husband, I would get another scan just to make sure that it was contained. And we would currently use something called a PSMA PET scan that is the best scan that we have available that rules out prostate cancer outside the prostate. Now, it's highly unlikely that this is spread uh, given what we know, uh, but the PSMA PET scan allows us to be sure. And we do the PET scan when, we're, when, we, when, we, when we see uh, cancer which has these aggressive components uh, within them. Um, the ability to treat, if there's a single area uh, and uh, this is one centimeter across, um, then yes, it's usually very possible to treat in a focal manner. And what we mean by that is that we use an energy source and we use the energy source to kill the cells within the lesion plus a margin around the lesion. All cancers need to be treated with a margin because all cancers extend microscopically beyond the limits that you can see. And whether nanonife or cryotherapy. Nanonife uses electricity. Cryotherapy freezes to minus 40, which is much colder than today. Uh, or HIFU, which concentrates sound waves um, and, uh, and increases very rapidly the tissue temperatures uh, to uh, make the cells uh, explode. Um, uh, it depends very much which energy source we would choose would depend where the lesion is. Uh, Debbie doesn't specify where the lesion is. Typically, if the lesion is in the front part of the prostate, we would use nanonife. If the lesion is in the back part of the prostate, close to the rectum, we would use high food. But it does look as though he is eligible uh, as long as the PSMA PET uh, was reassuring that we were dealing with disease that was confined. Now, there's no spread, so it's very likely that uh, Debbie's husband will have already uh, had either a PSMA PET scan uh, or a bone scan. So Debbie, I, I really hope that helps. And if a man is eligible for focal therapy and does need treatment, uh, we can treat them with much um, less in the way of side effects. So the risk of incontinence virtually disappears and about 90 to 95% of men will keep erections sufficient for penetration, assuming the erections were okay before treatment. Uh, the other thing we tell patients is that the um, volume of ejaculate will diminish 
semen is made in the prostate. Inevitably, when we treat the prostate, that diminishes. Some men will lose it completely. Semen tends to go anyway, definitely with surgery and also uh, with radiotherapy. So um, that's a discussion you can have with your urologist. Uh, and obviously, this is something that we specialize in uh, here at UCLH.